Mastermind, Strategist for Hire, written by Clouds, my head in the clouds not coming down, and read by Eleanor Elizabeth. Summary, Izuku Midoriya never got the chance to save Bakugo from the sludge villain and impress All Might. With his dream crushed, Izuku becomes bitter and angry. It also doesn't help that he faces discrimination at every turn. All he ever wanted was to be appreciated, so when the villains are the ones to recognise his talents, rather than the heroes, well, Izuku just can't resist. He might as well help those who actually want him around. Mistakes were made, and now, society must face a villain of their own making. Mastermind. Chapter 1. Temptation. Izuku Midoriya tried to like heroes, he really did. That was difficult, however, when it had only been a month since the number one hero himself had crushed Izuku's dreams like a stale cracker, and then simply watched as Kachan was attacked. Izuku wondered what would have happened if Death Arms hadn't prevented him from running in at the last minute. Maybe he would have impressed All Might, who would have taken him on and taught him how to be a hero. Izuku scoffed at his own thoughts. Him, a quirkless loser, impress All Might. Yeah, right. As it was, All Might had gotten his act together eventually, and Kachan had been alright, if unconscious, when he was retrieved from the sludge villain's body, and Izuku had spent the last month quietly selling off his All Might merchandise and harbouring a growing resentment towards Hero Society. Which is what led him to where he was now, sitting at a sketchy internet cafe about to tell a random internet acquaintance who, in all probability, might be a villain, how to kill a minor hero. He had found the post on one of the more underground hero forums, the kind that often included posts about vigilantes and villains alongside the heroes. Izuku didn't necessarily want to be on it, but he was holding on to a hope that if he just continued doing the things that he enjoyed before everything went to shit, then he might eventually start feeling a spark of something besides anger, The post itself hadn't been that long. Just one question. Why Heroes 301? Completely hypothetically, how would one go about killing Mount Lady? A simple post that shouldn't have changed his life. Izuku should have just ignored it, or maybe told the police, especially after he read through the user's old posts and discovered that, even if they weren't a villain, they were definitely a villain sympathiser. He should have not given it a second thought and turned to more reputable forums to try and dig himself out of his growing depression. Instead, he did none of that. For the next week, the question repeated in Izuku's mind like a broken record, his mind latching onto anything that could cut through his apathy. How would one go about killing Mount Lady? She was a new hero, prideful and media-hungry, which might explain why she was one of the hero world's rising stars. But Izuku knew she had weaknesses. He found himself at more and more of her fights over the next week, trying and failing to convince himself that he was there because he liked Mountain Lady, not because he was analysing her weaknesses. It had only taken him three days to realise his hero analysis books contained enough information on hero's weaknesses that he could probably kill any hero he wanted to with a little work. The thought made him sick, but it still didn't stop him from seeking out Mountain Lady's fights, and it definitely didn't stop his brain from obsessing over how to kill her. It would be laughably easy, Izuku realised, to use her love of the media against her, pretend to be a reporter, lure her into a densely populated area with narrow streets to prevent her from using her quirk, ask for a selfie and stab her through the heart, while her eyes were focused on the camera, then blend into the crowd before anyone realised she was dead. He tried to leave it at that. He knew how to kill her, so he really didn't need to be thinking about it any more. After the week he'd had, he really should have expected that putting the issue out of his mind wouldn't work. Anyway, it was all hypothetical anyway, right? What was the harm in private messaging the poster and describing his plan, as well as a few backups, just in case? After all, it wasn't as if the poster was actually a villain, just a villain sympathiser. Mount Lady probably wouldn't end up dead, 
and Azuka could make a dummy account at the internet cafe just in case, so that no one could track his IP address, and then he'd never have to use the account again, and maybe he'd actually be able to finally stop thinking about this. A little over an hour after walking into the internet cafe, Azuka signed out of the account he made, Mastermind 404, and walked out of the door, feeling oddly relieved. Izuku Midoriya tried to like heroes. It didn't work. Izuku's life went about surprisingly unchanged after his brief descent into maybe villainy. There had been several times since then when he found himself on the verge of a panic attack, wondering what he could have been thinking sending off his notes like that. Every time, he managed to calm himself down by justifying that the person he messaged probably just thought he was some creep for taking the post seriously. The poster hadn't even expected a response. He was just venting frustration. Probably. So nothing was going to come of it. He wondered, in those moments, if he was a bad person for feeling sad about that fact. He knew he was. It had been eight days since Suzuku messaged the poster, and he had just finished bandaging himself up from Karchan's latest attempt to put him in his place. The beatings had become even worse since the sludge villain incident. From what Azuka could gather, from Karchan's rants between explosions, he was trying to prove that he wasn't some weak-ass victim or something like that. The end result was that Azuku spent most of his life nowadays alone and in pain. But how was that any different from every day since he turned four? Izuku was just tugging his shirt down to hide the bandages as he left the bathroom when he heard his mother gasp and drop a pan in the next room. He ran in to find her staring open-mouthed at the TV, the news anchor standing on what was normally a busy street, the shot backlit by flashing police sirens. As of yet, the police have few leads into the identity of the attacker, only saying that he might have some sort of stealth quirk considering how quickly he was able to disappear in the aftermath of Mount Daisy's death this afternoon. A vigil for the fallen hero will be held. Isn't that terrible, Azuku? She was such a new hero, too. Who would do something like this? His mother turned back into the kitchen, trying to distract herself by preparing dinner. Azuku simply stared at the TV in shock, not really seeing anything. The poster had been serious after all. He had actually done it. Which meant that he, Azuku Midoriya, a hero fanboy, was now an accessory to a hero's murder. Izuku started to hyperventilate, only to be violently knocked out of his upcoming panic attack by another thought. Mount Lady was dead. That meant that he, a quirkless Deku, had beaten a hero. An unfamiliar warmth welled up in his chest as he fought down a smile. He wondered if this made him a bad person. He knew it did. Hey guys, it's Eleanor, and I hope you're all having a lovely day today. Here we are, we actually jumping straight into a new fic, and a long one. Was I planning to take like a break and do some shorter fix, like some one shots or some just like not over 40 chapter fix? Yes, but here we are. I got too excited. I really wanted to hop onto Mastermind because I love this fic. It is the one that convinced me. Like, this one sold me on Villain Azuku. So I hope you enjoy and that you're ready to jump on for another long ride. But don't worry, there will definitely still be a lot of other one-shots and short effects being interspersed between these chapters. And I just wanted to say thank you again for a thousand subscribers. I'm not over it. I'm never going to be over it. I can't stop bloody smiling getting a bit ridiculous to be honest but I am so ridiculously grateful and yes I would like to do something cool for a thousand so again please get in the comments and give me any suggestions you have a couple of people have had some suggestions so far one being to do a live stream I'm not really sure that would that would work what I would do and how I'd figure that out time wise I mean I know the vast, vast majority, at least according to my YouTube analytics, is saying that you're in America. So I guess try to find a time that would work there because I'm not in America. We have different time zones, I guess. 
Um, the other thing that I've heard suggested is making a Discord server, which I think would be very cool, but like would also be really awkward and embarrassing if none of you want that and nobody joined it and there was just like two of us in there. But it could be cool if you were interested in that and could also be another easy way for you guys to send me fic recommendations that you want recording. I don't know. Tell me what you think down in the comments. Give me suggestions for other things you think would be cool to do for a thousand. But before we end up in another long rambling outro, please be sure to like the video if you liked it and to boost my serotonin levels. Be sure to comment down below. We can gush about the thick. We can gush about anything. Just, I like talking to you. I'm nosy. Tell me things. And subscribe if you want to be notified whenever I make new videos. But until I see you again, be sure to practice some self-care. Guzzle down every drop of that bloody water. Be sure to brush your teeth. Get to bed on time. And don't skip your breakfast. Yes, this is a threat. And you should know by now that it's a threat. This isn't new, but I will catch you. You all, laters.